So my weekend has been great. It has been extraordinary. I mean, look at this view. You cannot get this in Accra. You can only get this in Amim. Amma, you've been jogging this morning. Listen, you need to join me on the mountain. Come on, to... get your trainers. I'll get my trainers on, guys. Go. We're going hiking. So Amma's <laughs> trying to take me hiking, but I need help because mm -hmm. this is the first time climbing up a mountain. We can't step on the brown yeah, stuff, just, right? Yeah, just avoid the brown pine needles. Sometimes there's sheep up here. Sheep? Yeah. Yeah, they'll come, they'll come and question you for why you're climbing their mountain. <gasps> wow. The view's amazing. The natural beauty is undeniable. You know we haven't reached. What? This is this is a break. <laughs> oh my god! This is the view! Wow, Amma, I understand why you wanted to come up here. This is a thinking spot. This is a meditation spot. Like, this is you and God's spot. There is potential, there is beauty, um, there are opportunities outside of Accra. Hi, my name is Amma Mensa. I am the founder and CEO of Rain, and welcome to the rainforest. So my weekend has been great. It has been extraordinary. I mean, look at this view. You can't get this in Accra. You cannot get this in Accra. You can only get this in Amim. And funny enough, the girl happens to be my friend that I've known in the UK for many years, since 2010, in fact. And she's got a 2,000 acre land that she's looking for investment in. And I'm gonna interview her and find out how she managed to get this amazing place and what the opportunities are for investment. Green trees, I mean, the, the fresh air, the freshness of the air, you can't get this, this definitely in Accra. And, oh, Amma, you've been jogging this morning. You want to see? Oh my God. How are you? Welcome to the fresh air. Listen, this place, I've had the best weekend ever. This is the place to be now, where, we need to sit down and have the interview. Listen, you need to join me on the mountain. We're going to the mountain? Are you ready to hike? Like, now? Come on, get your trainers. I'll get my trainers on, guys. Let's go. We're going hiking. I will see Come you on. in a bit. trying to take me hiking but I need help because this is the first time climbing up a mountain and um, we've got we've got helpers because yes. it's, it's needed right Amma? this is the family this is the family this is the royal family right here that okay. you're this is your inauguration into okay. the your coronation into My the coronation. royal family okay yeah. all right so um <laughs> usually you say it takes you what 15 minutes to get up here yeah about that but it'll take me probably an hour I, I don't know an hour Maybe maybe half an hour. Half an hour. We'll take we'll take it slow. Okay. We'll take it slow. We'll rest. Okay, we'll rest. We'll we'll check the views, check the views. as we go. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Right, so let's go. Okay. So we ha we can't step on the brown weed yeah, stuff, just, right? Yeah, just avoid the brown um, okay. pine needles. Okay. Yeah. As you get the hang of it, it, it gets easier. Yeah, because it's like the grip is actually good. Oh, I'm relaxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see? Okay. <laughs> and then... <laughs> I can do this. You can do this. Are you feeling the, the fresh air? Fresh air. Hey. You hearing the birds? I can hear the birds chirping. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's sheep up here. Sheep? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Well, I I like... Yeah, they'll come. <laughs> 
they'll come and question you for why you're climbing their mountain. So how do we get down? Their stairs. Their stairs, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Although sometimes I come down the same way. <gasps> okay. Wow, the view's amazing. It's just a shame that it's foggy today. But oh my god, even still, it's a pretty Stunning. exceptional sight. You know we haven't reached. What? This is this is a break. Oh take a seat, take a break. Oh my god. Take a break. <laughs> oh the altitude is is um is higher here, so take a break, take in some oxygen, take in the views. This is beautiful. But it's your first time climbing, so Want to take it easy? Yeah. But you're good. Done well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. Now, it's How many times have you done this mountain? When I'm here, I try to do it twice. Okay, amazing. It's good exercise, and when you are at the top and you're looking at everything, it just also gives you perspective as well. It reminds you of how small you are in comparison to the world. That is illegal loggers chopping down the trees that you can hear in the background. Ooh. I was hearing them last night. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All times of day and night. How do we stop that? How does that get stopped? That is, that is the question. How do we stop that? Ghana is apparently the most deforested country in the world. Wow. The last estimate I heard was in the last 10 years, we've lost 60% of our rainforest. 60%? Yeah the most deforested country in the world. I think I'm ready for part two. Part two of the climb? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Okay. Where's my partner? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. okay. The natural beauty is undeniable. Oh, it's just amazing, man. It's undeniable. Is there a name for this mountain or? Imimbo. Imimbo? <laughs> yeah. There's three. The one we're on is the largest by area. Okay. That one over there is the tallest. Okay. But this one, I think, where they say there's three, I think this is basically split into two. Okay. Yeah, so there's like another tiny piece. Okay. But it kind of, it's all part of the okay. same thing, but yeah. This is the last steep. Um, we're almost there. <laughs> we're almost there. The sun is coming out to, to greet us. Let's go. Let's go. We're at the summit. Made it. So these buildings, the stone is from the mountain. Wow. This is stunning. It's beautiful. Let's go sit. Let me show you where you can sit and just rest for a bit. Oh, there? Careful. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll go on your sides. So just see how my feet are sideways, okay. like a crab. 
one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Azul. Azul. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. This is the view. It's air conditioned. It's cold, it's beautiful, it's fresh. It's very, very fresh. Wow, Amma, I understand why you wanted to come up here. I come up here as often as I can. Wow. This is a thinking spot. This is a meditation spot. Like, this is you and God's spot. Amma, this place is amazing and I understand why you brought me up here. This is one with nature, like, and I, I wanna speak to you more about, first of all, the investment opportunity, but before we talk about the investment opportunity, tell people what you were doing in the UK. You touched on it when we went to the, the farm and the distillery, but talk to us about being in the UK, making that transition, and then we'll talk about the investment opportunity that diasporans have to mm. invest in, in Ghana. Yeah, so directly before coming, I was a consultant, which is why I was you know, brought here in the first place. So I've been a strategy consultant for a number of years. Um, I was also running a social enterprise for almost a decade. Um, it was called Beyond the Classroom. And the objective was to revolutionize the UK education system. So everything I've always done has been um, driven by creating some kind of impact. Um, and for rain, it's no different. Um, it is very much a commercial business, a commercial opportunity. I'm trying to create a globally recognized brand. Um, we've already, you know, we're already selling in, in the UK. We're looking at distribution deals in a number of other countries um, and it's about ensuring that the product does look good, it does taste good, um, but it also has to do good. And I just do believe that it's possible to create incredibly successful businesses and still do good and, and not exploit people along your, your supply chain and your value chain. I wanna to touch on the transition um, of coming back home and working here. So you did a consultancy for a, for a while. Um, a lot of people that are coming back are looking to set up their own business and not necessarily work for a company. Um, I mean, through the Guba Diaspora Network, we offer like internship for like people to come and actually, you know, work in Ghana and see yeah. how it is working. Because you've done both now. Mm. You, 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 you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneur. You, you worked as a consultant here. What do you think the difference had been and how did that impact the way you're working now? I think, um there's obviously there's a difference between running a business, um, being you know a consultant, being an employee, and there's a difference between doing all of those things in Ghana and doing all of those yeah. things in the UK. Um, and I would say you can often procrastinate on the things that you want to do and feel like it's not the right time, and there just will never be a right time. Um, there's so many things to be scared of. There's so many things to hold you back. There's so many reasons why you can, reasons that you can give for not doing things. Um, for me, I recognise that I won't be here forever. You know, um, for every one of us, our days are, are numbered and we don't even know what the number is. Yeah. So I'm not scared of anything more than I am scared of not fully living mm. my life while I have it. Um, and so that's kind of the mantra that I take with everything that I do, um, with the risks that I take in business, with the risks that I take in life. Um, it's, not, it's not that those fears don't exist. It's just that you have to sometimes put those things in perspective. Mm. Um, and life and death has kind of been very present for me since I was young, as I, as I mentioned, in terms of family members yeah, passing away. Dead. So. Yeah it's always been kind of at the forefront of my mind that I won't be here forever. So while I am here, what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna do it. 
Have you seen a lot of young people move into Ghana? Have you seen, uh, you know, before it used to be our mums and dads mm. come in pension <laughs> age and staying in Ghana, but for me, I've seen a lot of young people now come in. Why do you think that is? It used to be a punishment to yeah, say, to if you don't behave, <laughs> I'm sending down. you back. <laughs> it used to be a punishment and I think it's such, it's an incredible time. I, um, I don't take that for granted, the fact that I was lucky to be born at the time I was born. Mm -hmm. The movement that we are all part of, the cultural shifts, um, the Africanization of popular culture that we are all in the middle of yeah. right now. Um, I don't know that this has happened in this way before. And um, something very special is happening. Mm. And it's just a huge privilege to be on the continent in this way at this time. Um, I think the possibilities are endless. I think the opportunities are endless. And, um, and I don't take the privilege I have of being a diaspora for granted. Um, and I think it's incumbent on all of us to really think deeply about what that means and what we, what we do with it, you know? So you came, worked as a consultant here, and then got given the opportunity to take everything up, which included having employees over 200 people. Um, some would say even managing five employees in Ghana is tough. And being able to say, yes, I'm gonna take on this 2000 acre land that has this, that has that, that has this. I really want you to give us the reasons why you felt to take that challenge. Yeah, you spoke about um, life, basically saying life is too short. You need to live, you need to take up the challenge. So I think the reason why is, is what you've seen. Um, the potential, the opportunity is endless. When I looked at the market for alcohol specifically, um, and I understood that rum is a $16 billion business every year, it's growing. Um, it's outpacing gin, which wow. for the past mm -hmm. sort of decade has been the boom spirit. Um, rum is, is where the market is going at this time. Um, you know, I assessed um, I assessed the cashew that we grow, the brandy that we make, the rum that we make, the land, and there are opportunities and there's potential in everything. And I definitely have dreams and aspirations to develop so many more things, but it was just important that we started with something yeah. that was gonna help us build the commercial viability to be able to also bring that value back to the farmers um, and back to Ghana ultimately, which is this, which is why I'm I'm a child of the diaspora, and the view is always always looking back home. Tell us about the investment opportunities for people in the diaspora who are looking to invest but don't know what to invest in, and this is a potential. There are so many opportunities to come and join us. I speak about my team as the royal family and um, there's definitely lots of opportunities for kings and queens um, to come and join us um, in building something that I believe is and will be remarkable. We have stunning architecture which desperately needs investment yeah. but I think you can see that with the, the natural surroundings that we have and the serenity can't be created, can't. it can't be built. That's a gift that we have. And it's for us as, as humans to, to take care of that. Um, and that's really what the investment opportunity is, is to join us in building, yes, commercial viability around the world, um, like the likes of Uncle Nearest and you know all of these other brands that we know so well, Ciroc, your Doucets, all of those guys, right? Um, all of those are, are inspirations in terms of what is possible and Definitely, you know, those are aspirations that I'm looking to, but I'm also looking at what that means for where those products are coming from yeah. and where our product specifically is coming from. So I think there's like, I can see lots of different angles for people to invest in. So there's the brand, um, the, uh, the rum brand, there's possibly an ecotourism um, aspect to this because, you know, from the house this morning, the views that is there, the getaway for families and children. I can see um, 
a water park. I can I can see so many things. I can see um, quad biking. I can I, there's so many things that one can do here, and I think it's you know for us in the diaspora to come together and build this because we always look at the Americas, the Dubai, what they're doing, but what are we doing together as a collective? And I think this is a great opportunity for that to happen. And so, Amma, are you open or do you have your ideas already but, or, or are you open to people coming in to give you suggestions? Yeah, like, I think everything has to be collaborative. Um, as you've seen with my team, even climbing the mountain, mm -hmm. I don't do that by myself, yep. right? So nothing nothing is done by, by one person. And I think, um, you know, the diaspora are increasingly coming back to Ghana, but primarily they're coming back to Accra. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're 450 kilometers away from Accra. Yeah. And if we are not investing in and building Ghana as a country, we, we can't build an economy based on one city, mm. right? Um, that's that's not possible. And so I really do hope that people will see there is potential, there is beauty, um, there are opportunities outside of Accra. Um, the airport in Sunyani, about an hour and a half, two hours away from here, has recently reopened. Yeah. Um, we actually have a registered landing strip on this land. So at some point, private jets will be able to come and just land, land walk oh. right in. All of these possibilities exist. Um, and absolutely, this is not something that um, that I can do by myself or have any intention of doing by myself. Amma, you're in your 30s, right? Maybe. <laughs> Amma. I'm in my 30s, right, yes. Right, thank you. Amma's in her 30s and in the Ghanaian... Uh, Ghanaian system or Ghanaian way, mm. a young girl owning a business like this, mm. um, sometimes you don't get the respect that you kind of deserve or they undermine you or they look at you as Obawi, oh, like this small young girl. girl, small girl. And you've got short hair, you don't even look like you're in your 30s, you look like you're, you're 18. Okay. So how are you able to deal with that also and be able to work with people? Because I've met some of your team members. Hmm. Some of them are way older than you. Yeah. Some of them are your dad in all aspects, you know? Yeah. Your dad's age. So how are you able to still command the respect that you do and still get their respect? Hmm. I think that's a question you'd have to ask them. Um, I have never been anything other than what I am and who I am. Um, I, I started out on my journey as an entrepreneur in my 20s. So, you know, a decade on, um, for me, I feel like I'm, I've, I've been in the game for, for, for a while. Um, so I think also I've been raised to, to respect people based on humanity, um, not based on, you know, your status, your stature. Mm. Um, I interact with my senior staff the same way I interact with my junior staff. And I think, as we like to say at Rain, royal recognise royal. Mm. So it's about that mutual interaction. And I think, I do think Ghanaians in particular have this, uh, this skill, this talent, this gift of being able to see people and, and recognise mm. where they're coming from you know, and what their intentions are. I mean, I will speak to your staff, but in some cases, in some of the interviews that I've done, some of the CEOs and bosses, like if you become too close with them mm. as well, mm. they become too familiar with you and then start not having that respect that they should have. So how you, I just want to find out how you, you're able to manage that, you know, overseeing 200 people. How will you still be able to be friends with them, but still command the authority that you need to at times, right? Um, how are you able to do that? Because a lot of people struggle with that. Yeah. Um, I still have to make difficult decisions. Okay. I still have to um, decide how much people get paid. Mm. I still have to decide whether or not people get to keep their jobs. Mm. Um, I still have to do all of those things. It's, it's not in my nature to walk around shouting at people or 
or hitting people with sticks, which are things that I know... God, some of the Ghanaian people do. <laughs> some of the Ghanaian people, some European yeah. people will, yeah. will, will implement those kind, of, um, those kind of methods to control staff. Um, I lead by example. Um, I work very hard and so do my staff because they, under, they, they see me um, and they understand that if they want to to join me, then they have to do the things that I'm also doing. Um, and we all know that we're building something that will benefit every one of us at some point in the future. So I've been working with Ama for, I think, four years now. She's really an inspirational figure. When she says these things about empowerment, it's really true, because um, she's the only uh, boss, I can say, that wants you to really own and like be proud of what you do. When she's speaking to you, she wants you to really come out and say, yeah, you did this, you did this, you know. That's one strong thing that has really stood up to me about her. Since Amma came, we have actually seen steps, you know, into making sure they turn this place into a safe heaven for people to come and have a feel of how the place is. I've been working for the company for 14 years now. And then I've been working with a lot of managers and then CEOs. And then Amma is a sessioner. I think if I use a, a word artificial or natural, Amma is authentic. Uh, it has been since I've four years now. And then uh, I've seen a lot of CEOs that I've worked with. And then he is number one. The ideas that he showed, the, and then the way that he talks, and then uh, the, the motive behind what is the dream that he has. If you have a meeting, uh, he will not say I'm the boss. He will be a leader, and then he will show you what to do. Yeah, I've worked for 14 years now, and since I'm going to go over four years, I've seen a lot of improvement. Even in me, in myself, I was a technical supervisor, and then I moved on to the salary, and then because of that, I have an IBC course, IBD, which is in London, doing a course and online, which has helped me a lot. So I'm hoping to go to England and then see how the installation is done, at the, at the, even, even in various ways, because uh, if I go there and then see how things are going there, maybe I can get in enough knowledge on the distillation. A few words to tell Alma is to keep your dream. I think we will get there. The sky is the limit. First of all, kudos to you, sis. This has been an amazing experience. And just the fact that you're able to manage this 2,000 acres, first mm -hmm. of all, and then manage farmers, the team, and just, you know, just working with the women at the moment and how they are working so hard. How do you feel about the farmers and how we are treating our farmers in Ghana? Yeah, um, I'm really proud of what I'm doing. Um, I'm not proud of what I've done because I, I'm so early in the journey and there's so much that isn't how I want it to be. When I look at the women in the field, I see how hard they're working and I don't want them working that hard. Mm. But I also understand that they are being afforded an employment opportunity that they wouldn't otherwise have. And these are the challenges of taking over an existing business rather than building one from scratch. Right. So there's a lot about this place that isn't how I would have built it if I built it. Okay. Um, and so there's a process to reverse engineering so many things. So I've been able to increase salaries. I've been able to ensure that there are certain, there's certain equipment that there are machines that make some of this work easier. Um, but there's still so much to do. There's so much more I wanna do. And I come from a long line of women farmers. Mm. You know, I come from what I call warrior queens who I understand my great grandmother mm. used to sell a peteshi. So the fact that I am now selling alcohol <laughs> is almost like a whole full, a full circle, circle thing. Yep. Yeah, you know, um, so I understand how hard women work in this country and how amazing it is but I also understand that it shouldn't be that way right but then it's a process it's a process you've just started yeah. literally you're, you're still doing baby steps but 
what you have brought out from those baby steps is, is huge. And you are, you are conscious that you need to make an effort. And I think that's, that's even something to celebrate because it's like some people don't even think about that. Some people don't even think to buy Wellington boots for the women, mm -hmm. right? Some of them are coming, like stepping on those things, like some of the sugar cane, the, 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 the spikes are spiking up. You could easily step on it and hurt yourself, etc. So you're thinking, you're thinking about health and safety. And these are all yeah. things that we have learned consciously in the UK mm. about health and safety. So I think, you know, don't be so hard on yourself because you are trying and you are doing, mm. but it's a gradual process. I mean, the land itself is huge. And so it's, you have to do it step by step. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of steps. I think it's about time it's us as Africans, us as black people that are coming home, that are investing. We've had so many opportunities that we have not pursued, we have not done because we say that we didn't know. Well, I'm telling you, now you know that there's an opportunity here. There's a real investment here. You've seen Rain, the alcohol brand. You've seen the cashew. You've seen the sugar cane. You've seen the possible tourism destination that we have here. And it's down to you guys to get in touch with Amma if you are interested in investing. I think the time is now. Her details are on the screen. Get in touch with her now. And I'm sure that one of you will definitely invest and will enjoy the investment and the prosperity that's going to bring to you and your family as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching the show. I will see you next time. God bless.